Okay. Hello, everyone, for another session of Parka Office Hours. Before we start, I would like to remind you that Parka Code of Conduct applies, and I will just drop the link for our doc so you can check. So we have a lot of agenda items today. First of uh, first agenda item from me, just I would like to reiterate on the Parka Core Grafana plugin, which will be included with uh, the next version of Grafana. I, I guess it's 9.3. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, and with that, uh, you can actually add Parka as a data backend and. Since Grafana uh, UI now have the Flame Graph support, you can just connect your Parker in server instances directly to the Grafana front end. We have a detailed pro a blog post on it, and it's in the meeting notes. You can check it out. With that, uh, what else do we have in the agenda? Yes, we have some updates from Parka agent team, and Javier is here to give the, those updates on native stack unwinding. Do you want to take it away, Javier? Sure. Let me turn on the light first because, yes, it is very dark. Cool. Um, so, yeah, in the uh, Park Agent team, we've been working on um, stack unwinding for native applications without needing to, to require frame pointers. I think that um, Vaishali already gave um, an introduction, I think maybe two weeks ago or maybe four, I don't know about the uh, the work we were doing and what was the goal. So um, yeah, uh, right now uh, we have uh, landed in Maine um, some of the changes to, to make this work. Um, so far we support, uh, well, th the way it works is that first we process all the dwarf unwind information and we um, convert it into a, another format that is more convenient to use from the BBF side. We load this in a BPF map and then uh, we have developed um, a custom unwinder using this data that runs in BPF. Um, so some of the benefits is, well, first, it unwinds applications without frame pointers. But um, compared to other profilers out there, like, for example, Perf, that we love, uh, Perf copies the, the whole stack trace, sorry, the whole stack and um, the registers from the application um, as many times as you are um, taking samples. Uh, and the problem this has is that uh, there is a big overhead. This uh, the whole stack has to be copied from uh, from user space uh, from one process to another. Um, usually, like it's a kernel that does this for you, but anyways, uh, so it has to be copied over, and and then um, you have to analyze it in in another application, which is uh, problematic from a security perspective. Um, so the idea of this approach is that everything is done in uh, in the BPA program. Um, the data that is in your program stack never never leaves uh, that process, right? So so far, um, this this custom table that I was talking about, um, it obviously has a limit. Everything has a limit in computers, even though we pretend uh, they are infinite Turing machines. And um, right now, we support well. We, we used to support with the first iteration up to one hundred fifty thousand um, items in the in the table. And now with some optimizations we've done, we support 250,000. Just to give you an idea, this is enough to profile um, a big majority of medium-sized applications running on Linux. For example, um, C Python or C Ruby. Not not the Ruby or Python stack, but the interpreters can be profiled uh, with this amount of rows. And um, but obviously we want to be able to profile any application, like way bigger applications such as Postgres, MySQL, SystemD, uh, you name it. Um, so this is the working that the work that we're doing on that we're doing right now. Uh, so hopefully um, in the next couple of days uh, we'll have support for way bigger tables. And uh, the other important thing to mention here is that all these right now it's uh, behind a feature flag. Um, and I'll send a pull request later in the in the messages here, so you can take a look if you want. Um, but the idea is obviously like once uh, these this is proven to, to work the way we expect. And once we do some optimizations, because right now, for example, we don't do any caching whatsoever. We repeatedly compute the tables over and over. And this kind of um, this kind of low hanging fruit that we want to uh, tackle. Once we do that, uh, we will enable it by default. Um, obviously, like after doing way more testing, and not only in our on our side, but also uh, through some of our users. 
So yeah, uh, that's about it. We hope that in some weeks it'll be fully polished. But right now, you can give it a try um, with the with the feature flag. Is there anything that that I've missed or any questions to Javier? Seems like nobody has any question for you. So, okay. We haven't deployed this on our demo cluster. We are working on it. Uh, so you can, I think we can start demoing and deploying some binaries to actually test this feature on the demo application. And you can actually already see that uh, in demo and we can tweet about it. So if you're interested. Cool, we also have a lot of cool features in the UI. So for the next section, we are going to hear about them. And for the first one, we have the flame graphs and Frederick going to talk about that. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll keep this uh, kind of short because it's not really new flame graphs. It's just what we've done is we optimized the API response that we that, that the flame graph API uh, um, returns. So previously, um, if you recall, the, the flame graph is essentially a tree, right? And every time we have metadata in a tree node, so let's say a function name, um, memory address, and so on, right? Um, we potentially store all of these things duplicate because we store them in each node directly. And the new thing that we now have is that we deduplicate functions, mappings, locations, and only reference those via IDs into a global array. Um, this is pretty similar to how pprof actually does it. Um, and because we knew that, we kind of went, and all this work, by the way, was done by Matthias. He's, he's just traveling today, so that's why I'm talking about this and not him. Um, but uh, the next step here is essentially not just to deduplicate based on unique objects, but also to have a, a global string table so that we deduplicate strings that occur multiple times as well. And so that was also included in this in this patch. And we've seen up to 90, 95 in the norm, normal case, something like 80% um, improvement of uh, payload size when returning um, returning flame graph data, which is which is huge, right? Before, we've seen that we could pretty regularly uh, kind of exceed the gRPC max message size, even though we've already bumped it to like 64 megabytes or something. So yeah, it's exciting. This is kind of a good uh, scalability improvement. We have more coming, um, but this was this was one really important one. Interestingly, because we're rendering much less, we're also faster at returning these responses. That was, a, I mean, I, I guess it's like classic, classic performance. Um, um, I don't know, lecture, but uh, yeah, was was good to see see that validated once again. Cool. I added the. Uh related PR to the to the notes so you can check it out for yourselves. I think there are some benchmarks in there if I'm not mistaken. All right. Up next we have Monica to talk about call graphs. I guess we are working on some super cool call graphs recently and they are about to land in Parker. Yep, so let me share my screen with you all. So I, I think we uh, we spent some time talking about this during the last office hours, but I just wanted to show the latest version and uh, I guess share an update that APR was merged today. So the call graph is still behind a feature flag, but um, 
but it has a new uh, UI, basically. So if we uh, select a point in the metrics graph, we see a call graph that looks like this. And this is similar to what we saw last time, but one change is, is upon searching, uh, we see other nodes are filtered out. So this may not necessarily be like the final state of what the UI will look like on search. Um, but for now, this is, uh, that's what happens. And uh, yeah, we have a tooltip that appears on hover. And feel free to, to check out, uh, I guess, the call graph over the, the next days, weeks. Uh, I think it'll be good to gather some feedback on, on the usability and the performance of this call graph and, and optimize that before we uh, release it past the, the feature flag. Cool. I also added the uh, related PR in the meeting notes so that you can find out about that flag and test it out and give us feedback. Thanks for Monica for the demo. If you have any questions to Monica, it's just go for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Also, feel free to write on Discord <laughs> later. Always feel free to engage us in Discord. In like we have public channel, channels dedicated to agent and server and the front end. Just if you have any questions, find us there. And with that, the board is now open for any questions or any discussion items that you have that you would like to ask to maintainers, I guess. Nothing, no questions. All right. Anyone else has anything to say? If not, going once, going twice. Okay. Then this is going to be a short one this week. Thanks for attending to Park Office Hours. As always, you can find us on Discord, on Twitter, uh, on YouTube. We will be uploading this uh, video afterwards if you want to watch. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.